Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 23. This week, I'll be describing how we can actually measure the length of time that a flash is on, and we'll be calling that flash duration. For most people, flash duration doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's considered such a short duration that it'll freeze the motion and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, in fact, Canon doesn't even publish their flash duration in their user manuals for their flash. Uh, I've been told that Nikon does, so kudos to them. Um, and for a lot of the common Canon flashes, you can find that information online. But what we're going to do today is we're going to actually uh, measure it for ourselves and make sure that uh, the values published online are, are good if we want to, um, or just have that information you know, with higher confidence because we've actually measured it. One thing I wanted to mention about modern flashes like this is that their uh, flash tube is actually filled with xenon gas. And the reason for that is because xenon gas will uh, emit more light per unit of energy and it'll also work at lower voltages than like an air-filled uh, flash tube. Now, those are the benefits. The disadvantage is that uh, xenon gas glows and that means that the minimum duration for a flash like this is actually going to be a lot longer than an air-filled tube. Uh, but because the vast majority of people uh, don't work with really high-speed uh, things, the, these, these are the uh, flashes that have dominated the market. And they work really great for most things, uh, water droplets, popping balloons, uh, they'll freeze the motion on all of that kind of stuff. About the only thing I've done that they really don't work great for is uh, projectile photography. And uh, there I've uh, developed an air gap flash, but that's a uh, discussion for another video. So here's the basic setup I'll be using to measure the flash duration. I have a camera axe here, and this is just being used to power the projectile sensor, which I'm actually only using half of. I'm using the light detection. Uh, half and the reason I'm using this instead of a light sensor is because these uh, light sensing uh, diodes here are a higher end than my light sensor so they can detect uh, shorter durations of light. I think the regular light sensor would probably work but since I had this type of light sensor sitting around I thought I'd use the projectile sensor instead to make sure that the sensor wasn't a, a limiting factor. And uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be recording the voltage of this sensor uh, on the oscilloscope and basically the, there'll be a spike from the light and the width of that spike will be the amount of time that the uh, flash was uh, emitting light. And right here I have the 580EX2 speed light from Canon and uh, this uh, flash I'll be Oops. And I'll be measuring the uh, duration of this flash at its lowest power setting of 1 over 128. And the way speed light flashes from Canon work, and, and basically all small flashes today, is that uh, the lower the power setting, the faster they'll go. And the reason for that is because they uh, use a MOSFET to basically cut off the light once the uh, uh, duration, uh, once the power setting has been reached. So the, sh the lower the power setting, the shorter the duration of the flash needs to be to hit that power setting. Uh, some studio flashes don't do that and you'll, you'll see that their power settings uh, don't affect the duration of the flash. They'll just uh, use a resistance to basically weaken the effect of the flash but but keep the duration at the uh, same setting but with speed lights and anything powered with batteries there's a big power savings to be had by making the flash duration shorter so that's what you can expect from battery operated flashes and I'll just trigger this manually and what we see is that we have a duration of about 15.8 microseconds which, equate, which equates to about 160 
thousandth of a second, which is approximately what people have reported online. So, so this measurement seems uh, about right. Now I'm going to try measuring this speed light from Yongnu. Uh, these are much cheaper than the Canon flashes I use, and I'm kind of curious what the duration of the flashes on, on these uh, speed lights. So I trigger it and that's a bit curious. So the duration here is like maybe seven microseconds, which is more than twice as fast as the Canon flash. I've double checked these numbers a few times now and it definitely seems that the uh, young new flash, this 460 model is uh, always twice as fast or a little faster than that even than the Canon flashes and uh, not sure why I may revisit this uh, take this as one data point I should uh, make sure that my testing methodology is correct but right now these uh, young new flashes actually seem faster than the Canon ones which is sort of mind-boggling to me and uh, oh one other thing I wanted to uh, put out there is it should be possible to measure this duration uh, directly from the projectile sensor uh, to the camera axe and then there would be no need for the uh, oscilloscope and if somebody wants to write a menu for the camera axe software to do that I'd uh, feature it in a future video uh, and um, if nobody does that software I'll, I'll probably end up doing it at myself doing it myself sometime so there you have it a bit unexpected results but uh, that deserves some more investigation but uh, very interesting thanks for watching